right, now looking at erythropoiesis, uh, which is simply how red blood cells are made, uh, what we have on the screen is um, <laughs> bone, and we're looking at the bone marrow. And where we started off was we had a stem cell, uh, which then uh, 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 gave us the, the, the myeloid, uh, myeloid progenitor cell and then we said we had uh, precursor cells now the component which follows is that mostly that is dependent on um, iron uh, but from the stem cell to that point this one is dependent on erythropoietin uh, so once we have our, uh, which what we call pro-erythroblast precursor, we now go into the erythroblast stage, which is iron dependent. And in this uh, stage, we have an early uh, erythroblast phase uh, where there is accumulation of the hemoglobin as we go on. And then we have uh, the late erythroblast stage, which then takes us into the next stage of reticulocyte. Now, in the reticulocyte stage, uh, we have it um, uh, having two phases. First of all, before we get to there, we have the erythroblast ejecting the nucleus. We do know that red blood cells have no nuclei, so we have it ejecting the nucleus and we have several antigens uh, uh, either continue to uh, fall off and some become more prominent and we find that this immature reticular site has um, a reticulate looking like structure before it goes into the blood where it matures into um, a, a mature reticulocyte. Um, the entry of the reticulocyte into the blood system is through diapedesis. This is simply going in between um, the uh, vascular uh, cells and once it goes into the capillaries that is where now we have a mature um, erythrocyte or uh, a red blood cell uh, being seen now if we have to look at the detail of this here we go we have the stem cell which is pluripotent and also known as uh, hemocytoblast. And this is the one that then uh, matures into a pro-erythroblastic stage that we're talking about. And in this stage, we have a dispersed chromatin, uh, we have a definite nucleoli and cytoplasmic uh, basophilia. So when you look at this under the microscope, you actually see patches of red in uh, within this particular cell, very different from the stem cell. Uh, but as it um, uh, as it goes on, you see that there is this uh, clumped chromatin structure with uh, no nucleoli and with maximum basophilia. Uh, now the stage is known as basophilic erythroblast. It then matures into a polychromatic chromatophilic erythroblast that has condensed chromatin, uh, gray-green cytoplasm, and hemoglobin synthesis is, is, is noted. Um, finally, in the erythroblastic stages, we have the orthochromatophilic uh, erythroblast, which has now uh, a condensed uh, eccentric nucleus and pink cytoplasm. This is then um, extruded 
and then we have our reticulocyte which is non-nucleated spherical and has uh, free ribosomes um, that is then when we have our um, red blood cell in four and so after uh, having seen this what determines uh, the production of, of, of these red blood cells so we see a mechanism that regulates the rate of erythropoiesis here. It's a CISO type of thing. Now, if the normal blood oxygen levels sort of reduce, this becomes a stimulus uh, of hypoxia. And um, this can be due to a reduction in red blood cells themselves or the availability of oxygen in blood or just increased tissue demand of oxygen and so this uh, leads to oxygen decrease and this is sensed um, by uh, kidneys that then release uh, erythropoietin this is sensed rather by the blood and the kidneys uh, by blood factors and the kidneys then release erythropoietin and erythropoietin is the one that stimulates <coughs> the red uh, bone marrow to enhance erythropoiesis to make more red blood cells hence you have an increased oxygen carrying ability of the blood and we have a CISO back to normal what happens after the 120 days and we no longer need the red blood cell it's a, has done most of its work um, we come to a distraction and what this entails is simply a degradation of hemoglobin into him and the globin the globin returns to the body's metabolic pool where its amino acids are utilized and then we have the rings that we initially had of the heme degraded by heme oxidase to yield bilirubin and bilirubin um, is further reduced to form bilirubin by uh, bilirubin reductase uh, if we have to put this into something uh, that we can understand is what we have here is hemoglobin um, being uh, broken down into the heme and the globin then the iron is released and we have iron plus transferrin uh, going uh, to be uh, processed uh, by either uh, storage in the liver or uh, in the spleen and let's go the liver way if it's in the liver you will find that this will enhance erythropoiesis uh, also we have it causing direct uh, influence on red blood cells uh, the globin itself um, takes part in amino acid uh, uh, rejuvenation and so this is all happening in the macrophage uh, where these aged abnormal damaged red blood cells uh, uh, are uh, being processed for cell death the believer team um, is tend into bilirubin as earlier said from the here and then we have free bilirubin which goes through the liver and this is conjugated goes through the intestines and can come out as uh, bilirubin de uh, derivatives uh, through the kidneys and we have them uh, uh, taken out of the body and so basically that is the how and the function of red blood cells uh, within uh, the blood system.